What's going on YouTube? Bacon here bringing another video. This one going to be my week 8 battle for the OLT Harmony Division Season 5. This is the last week of the regular season and we are taking on Matt, coach of the Gerdurians of the Galaxy. Uh, we of course are coming into this game at 6-1. and one. With a win we do clinch the number 2 overall seed. Um, I believe if we lose the lowest we could end up at this point is the 3 seed if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I definitely wanted to win this game because I wanted to go directly to semifinals. As I mentioned in a couple previous video videos, they do do the uh, LD style of playoffs here where the one and, su and two seeds get a bye directly to semifinals uh, where they play each other and then the winner goes directly to finals afterwards. So um, definitely want that kind of double bye there um, that that would afford me. Even though I would get like a one round bye with a three or four seed. I'd rather get the double bye, go right to semifinals, then just have to win one game to get into the finals match. So uh, even if we would have to play uh, Miso Soup, who uh, went 8-0 this regular season and uh, was the number one overall seed, uh, I've always said, you know, beat the best to be the best, and uh, I'd rather take the one less game and play a harder opponent uh, than take the bye and then play two extra opponents, uh, or an extra opponent. So, um, yeah. That's, uh, that's just kind of a brief kind of recap of where we're sitting here. Basically to give you some context that while I don't need to win this game, I would really, really like to win this game. So even though I didn't put a ton of effort into the team builder this time around, I've still like brought what I thought was a pretty reasonable team on my end. Uh, I felt like some of my Pokemon had some pretty good matchups here and I was able to kind of exploit those in the team builder. Um, so it, this team kind of built itself, I, I should say, um, with this with this round of play. So. Uh, let's get into the team builder here. Uh, on his side, he's got, of course, the Weavile, Aegislash, Latias, Primarina, Nihiligo, Pyloswine, Weezing, Moltres, Mega Manectric, Linoon, and Hariyama. Hariyama, of course, a Pokemon that has put in a ton of work for us in the SSBL, if you've seen those videos. Um, don't really expect to see the Hariyama, just thought it was kind of noteworthy to, to talk about there. Uh, I do have the double Psychic plus Katagra, so I, I didn't think I would see it this game. Uh, as far as threats on his side of the field go, the Weavile is a huge, huge threat to my team. Uh, if he's running like Metal Claw, or it might even get Iron Tail uh, to hit my Diancie, he's basically going to wreck through my team uh, with that Weavile. Basically forced me into bringing Scizor this match, which if you just look at uh, the team he brought, and also even just the team he's got on the left there, um, Scizor is a huge problem. Uh, because it's great versus the Weavile, but it's really not great for us versus the rest of his team. So um, definitely going to have some difficulty with the Scizor here, but I think I had to bring it to help check the Weavile. Uh, I guess Slash, not too surprised to see that thing, is an uber for a reason. Um, King Shield obviously being somewhat problematic for things like my Crocodile, can't like knock in, uh, lock itself into knockoff or, or uh, crunch or anything like that while the I guess Slash is around, uh, or at least not too comfortably anyways, because can just King Shield drop my attack stat. Um, but it's probably going to be a bulkier variant to help check things like my Mega Diancie, my Scizor to some extent. Um, I wouldn't be too surprised to see that from the Aegis Slash here. Mega Manectric obviously vastly outspeeds my whole team. He could definitely be running a, um, a modest nature on his Mega Manectric. He's going to do some pretty good damage to me with just Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, um, Flamethrower, or Overheat, and uh, HP Ice or Signal Beam. Signal Beam probably makes a little bit more sense. Uh, it hits the Crocodile a little bit harder, it hits the Celebi much harder. Uh, you could run HP Ice to hit the Dragonite, I guess, um, but Thunderbolt should still do a decent chunk to me, and unless my multi-scale is broken, he really doesn't want to be staying in anyways. Um, so those are kind of like the big threats I was looking at in this game, mostly the Weavile, I guess Slash, and Mega Manectric, and trying to plan around those a little bit uh, with my team build. So let's get right into my side of it here. Uh, leading off here, we've got Rotom Heat, Hot Pockets, Running Leftovers, Overheat, Bolt Switch, Will-O-Wisp, and Defog. Running Max HP, a good bit of special defense with a uh, Calm Nature. This is kind of the main switch into the Mega Manectric. He really shouldn't have anything that can touch me. Uh, and with Leftovers, I felt like Leftovers were better than the Barry in this instance because I feel like uh, Rotom the Heat's going to be on the field a lot. Uh, basically, when you're deciding on Leftovers versus Barry with a Rotom, it's uh, whether or not you're going to need to have the Barry to avoid a two-hit KO from something, or if you're coming in on something repeatedly over the course of the match, maybe you probably want to go with Leftovers there. Um, so that's just kind of some general Rotom building advice, if I, if I can say that. Uh, is how much do you think this Rotom is going to be on the field? Based on the hits you think it's going to be taking, is it going to get into barrier range at like a meaningful point? Uh, is the barrier likely to get knocked off? Things like that are, are some considerations you have to 
to take into account when you're building with a with a rotom form. So leftovers here, I just felt like we're better. If the mana control is coming in a lot over the course of the match, I can come in on Volt Switch and basically get my health back. Uh, he should only be doing about like 10% to me, I think, with Volt Switch anyway. So uh, yeah, that's the rotom heat set here. Uh, just really nice bulky pivot versus team. Can burn things like the Weavile, burn the Pile of Swine, uh, just fire off some strong overheats versus team, Volt Switch out on uh, Moltres. Uh, I should mention as well, this is a really good check to his Moltres. Uh, so this thing's going to be on the field a lot. Leftover is definitely going to be clutch in this game. Next up here is Grace the Mega Diancy, running Moonblast, Earth Power, Diamond Storm, and Stealth Rock. Uh, running max speed, max special attack to speed tie with the Latias on his squad. Um, Stealth Rock, I felt like I couldn't fit on anything else on this team because I didn't bring the Celebi, obviously. Uh, and then my only other uh, Stealth Rocker is the Crocodile, and I was, felt like Crocodile had some other moves that it needed this match. So uh, Stealth Rock on Diancy I think was fine. I do force some switches on his team. And I think Iga Slash will be coming in on me pretty frequently. And I really want to have Stealth Rocks there to pressure the Moltres. Since I felt like I was kind of forced to bring my Scizor anyways, I really wanted to at least be chipping down the Moltres over the course of the match with Stealth Rock damage. Uh, and Diancy is obviously a big, big threat to that thing offensively. I force a lot of switches on his team uh, and I have plenty of opportunities to get up rocks over the course of the match. And pressuring him to defog is always a good thing as well because I do have the dual fire type myself uh, with Volcanion and the Rotom Heat. So... Uh, I felt like bringing rocks on Diancy was better than bringing something like rock polish or anything like that. Uh, I think it was more valuable to me to get the stealth rock chip on his team over the course of the match if I could. Next up here is Nixon the Crocodile, running Choice Scarf Crocodile with Intimidate, Earthquake, Knockoff, Crunch, and Stone Edge. So uh, it's always a toss up when you're running Choice Scarf Crocodile whether you want to run Intimidate or you want to run Moxie. Uh, Intimidate is becoming a lot more popular lately just because it eases switch ins to some of the Pokemon on your, uh, the other Pokemon on your team. Uh, like even if I come in on a hard uh, or on a free switch versus a Weavile, so like Weavile versus Crocodile, just blind switch, uh, we both get in. At least getting the Intimidate off on the Weavile is going to help ease my switch into Scizor, ease my switch into the Rotom Heat, uh, things like that. And uh, I can basically just uh, use Crocodile to break through his team a little bit, potentially Pursuit Trap the uh, Latias. Excuse me, I don't have Pursuit on this set. Uh, he has to worry about Pursuit with his Latias, uh, but I do have Crunch and Knock Off there. Uh, the dual Dark Stab is mostly because he could be running a Z-Move variant of Latias, to which Crunch would do significantly more damage. Uh, and I want to have a good check in the back to say, okay, it, even if the Latias is setting up Combines in my face or something like that, I can always go Crocodile, go, go for Crunch and Revenge Kill that thing and not worry about it. Uh, Choice Scarf is also obviously a nice offensive check to something like the Mega Manectric. He could be running a Scarf variant of Moltres with like HP Steel to hit my Diancy. Um, so things like that I need to watch out for with my Crocodile. Uh, and just keep this thing around to potentially be that late game check uh, towards the end of the game that I need to clean. Uh, or at least get rid of something like the Manectric, which is, like I mentioned is a pretty huge threat to my squad. Next up here is Teka the Volcanion, running leftovers with Steam Eruption, Sludge Bomb, Flamethrower, and Substitute. Max HP, max special attack, modest nature on the Volcanion. Uh, I went for Flamethrower over Fire Blast in this game because I really didn't feel like missing a critical move. Like, if, I, if he stays in with something like his Weavile on me, I want to make sure that I'm KOing that thing back with a Flamethrower. Obviously, Fire Blast would also KO it, but it's got the chance to miss. Flamethrower easily KOs Weavile uh, and has the 100% accuracy. So. I felt like it was more valuable to hit in this game than it was to um, than it was to do a little bit of extra damage. Uh, Iga Slash wouldn't have been okayed by either move if he's running a bulkier variant, and it should be two hit KO'd by other, either move. So again, there uh, it makes no sense to run Fire Blast. Uh, and then I'm not really clicking the Fire type move on anything else on his team. I'm pretty much clicking Steam Eruption on everything else. So. Um, yeah, that's the uh, that's the Volcanion set. Sludge Bomb is there just kind of as a niche thing to hit the Primarina if you happen to bring that. Uh, because I do have the Celebi plus the Volcanion, I really was not expecting to see Primer in this match. Obviously, Volcanion pretty hard shuts down um, Primarina. The best thing it can really hit me with is like Psychic, uh, which isn't going to be doing nearly as much damage as the Sludge Bomb is going to be doing back to him. Uh, I'm glad to see the, the Latias didn't come. That's kind of one of his main switch-ins to the uh, Volcanion in the first place, so I'm glad to see that's not here. Uh, if I can get some substitutes up on things like the Weavile, things like the Aegis Lash, the Moltres that I force out, uh, I can potentially basically 2-hit KO everything on his team, particularly everything that he uh, ended up bringing here. So uh, that's the Volcanion set for, uh, for this game. I think it's got a really, really nice matchup here, and I really want to try and abuse it as much as possible, get a bunch of substitutes up and just start breaking through his team. 
Next up here is Dedicated Sakmon the Scizor Ring. Akaberry Scizor with Technician, of course. Uh, Swords Dance, Bullet Punch, Knockoff, and Roost. Running pretty close uh, to... Not pretty close. I'm running Max H, uh, Max Attack Adamant Nature uh, with a good bit of HP investment there. I believe my speed investment is just a creep. Whoa, what's 200 creeping? It's a slow mon. Uh, I think it, that was just creeping if you wanted to run like a uh, fast Primarina or something like that. Um, I honestly can't remember what the speed creep there was on, but um, basically running this kind of a Scizor set here is going to allow me to take HP Fire from his Latias. It's a pretty good check to his Latias over the course of the match. He obviously has to fear me having a Bug-type move. I felt like Knockoff was better just because Knockoff also hit the Aegis Slash in this instance, and Sword Stance allows me to SD in the Aegis Slash's face if he's thinking like I'm banded or something and he wants to scat out what I'm going to go for. I could potentially get a free Sword Stance up and start to hit, uh, break through him that way. If I can get rid of the Manectric, or at least chip down the Manectric, and get rid of the Moltres, uh, Scizor has potential to do something versus team, uh, but like I mentioned in kind of the initial uh, team builder aspect of this, it's like, I really just needed Scizor for the defensive check to Weavile, and then also to Latias as well, uh, but looking at the rest of his team now, I kind of wish I hadn't brought it because it does really poorly against most of what he brought bar the Weavile, so, uh, and I guess Pyloswine to some extent as well, but... Um, yeah, Scizor's matchup is very difficult in this one, for sure. I do have to worry about Flame Body on Moltres, which, <clears throat> excuse me, is another reason I did not opt to run U-Turn here. I really didn't want to be forced with those mind games of, is the Moltres coming in, is it not coming in? If he does come in, he's got the 30% chance to burn me, so uh, I felt like Scizor was just better here running an SD-type set. Uh, allowed me to check the Weavile, allowed me to check the Latias had he uh, happened to bring that. And I could potentially set up on something like the Pilot Swine if I'm able to remove the uh, Moltres early game. And lastly here, we've got Kafagrigus here. Sarcophagus coming back once again with another offensive Trick Room set. So we've got Nasty Plot, Trick Room, Shadow Ball, and Hidden Power fighting with Ghostium Z. Uh, max HP, max special attack, Quiet Nature to minimize our speed. Um, Trick Room Kafagrigus just really puts in the hurt on his team. I could potentially set this up on things like his Pilos Wine, things like his Weezing, uh, even his like Manectric. I can, can set up Trick Room plus Nasty Plot on, I believe. Uh, I believe I take two Thunderbolts if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so Cathagrius definitely has the opportunity to break through his team a little bit here. HP fighting is obviously there, obviously there for the Weavile. I believe I also live a banded knockoff from full because I do have the Z, uh, the Z crystal on Cathagrius as opposed to a regular item. And I should be able to do some big damage back with HP fighting. I'm actually not sure if it knocks it out from full unboosted. Uh, I'd have to check that calc again, but um, Nasty Plot Trick Room, pretty standard Cathagrius set as far as the offensive uh, variants are concerned. Really just going to try to use this early game to break through his team a little bit and then try and clean up with something like my Choice Scarf Crocodile or my uh, or my SD Scizor should he give me the Moltres. So um, yeah, that's the team for this week. Again, uh, this game is important for me in the sense that I really want that two seed. Uh, but let's get right into the matchup here. As you can see, he brought the Mega Manectric, Aegis Slash, Weavile, Weezing, Pyloswine, and Moltres. Um, like I mentioned, Scizor's matchup is absolutely horrendous in this game. I'm going to have to do some serious work to get rid of the Manectric and the Moltres before I can do anything, uh, but at least I do have the option to check the Weavile with it. Uh, at lead here, his entire team loses the 1v1 to Rotom Heat. Like, I can burn the Pyloswine and start overheating that thing. Uh, I can just Volt Switch out on the Moltres or on the Weezing. And I can throw off burns on the Weavile or on the Aegis Slash as well, potentially overheats as well. Uh, and then I can also overheat on the Manectric, and none of them can really do a whole lot back to me. So uh, I've got no reason not to leave with my Rotom Heat here, as I said. Uh, and he's just going to lead off with his Mega Manectric right away and get that thing Mega Evolved. So uh, that's fine by me. Like I mentioned, there's really nothing, unless he's running like HP Rock, which still wouldn't do that much damage to my uh, Rotom Heat and would not be a 2 at KO. Uh, there's really nothing his Manectric can do to me here, and if he stays into take an overheat, he's going to take a ton of damage. So uh, he's got a Volt Switch out here, obviously only doing about 18% to my Rotom. I believe that is modest damage on the Manectric, so that's a good thing for me to note. Uh, but I'm just going to go right for overheat, as I said, and do some big damage to whatever he wants to bring in. I didn't think he'd bring in the Moltres, just this is a risk of me going for Volt Switch myself. Uh, and overheat here is still going to do a good chunk to anything that comes in. As you can see, I take about a third of the health off the Pyloswine, which is really nice for my Mega Diancie, actually. So, um, and for my Crocodile as well, I should say. So um, I'm just going to throw off a burn on the Pyloswine. I'm pretty sure he's going to go for rocks this turn. Like, rocks are very good versus my team. And he definitely wants to get them up if he can. So I was pretty sure he was just going to go for him there. And uh, getting a burn off the Pyloswine is nice because 
basically now it's set up fodder for my Scizor. He really isn't going to be doing anything to me with Earthquake. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just defog the following turn. I really don't mind him statusing me here as he is going to go for a Toxic. Uh, Toxic's not great for me, but it's also not the worst thing. Like, I'll trade all this damage that I've just gotten on this pile of swine for getting rid of rocks uh, and taking a little bit of a Toxic chip here uh, with my Room Heat. So here I'm pretty sure he's just going to reset his Stealth Rocks because now he can kind of 1v1 me. Uh, by just clicking Stealth Rocks as I click Defog, I'm already at minus two for my Overheat, so I'm pretty sure he's just gonna go for Stealth Rocks again, and I'm using that as my opportunity to get right out into my Sarcophagos. So, um, what I'm gonna elect to do here is Nasty Plot first, because I think you'd sack off your Pile of Swine, if anything, uh, as he goes for Toxic here. So I'm gonna Nasty Plot first, which is gonna maximize my Trick Room turns on the following turn. Uh, so get the Nasty Plot off, and I'm basically going to Oko everything on his team with uh, HP Fighting plus my Z move. Um, so uh, Sarcophagos is definitely poised here to get two Mons. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is go for Trick Room. So he goes for Icicle Crash and unfortunately gets the flinch on me. So that obviously sucks because not only am I short now one turn of Trick Room, uh, but I'm also short one turn of Toxic Damage. So instead of living for three more turns after that flinch, or after I get up Trick Room, I'm only going to live for two more. So I uh, got to go for Trick Room again. He's going to go for another Icicle Crash. Thankfully, does not flinch me this time. Um, but unfortunately, my, my Sarcophagos is not going to be able to do as much damage as I wanted it to this game. And it's gotten up Trick Room later than I wanted it to now. So uh, I'm just going to go for the Shadow Ball here. I knock something out with Shadow Ball for free this turn, which is fine. Uh, obviously, he's just going to sack off the Pilot's Wine. It's burnt and it's at 26% and it's got Stealth Rocks up. So it's basically done its job. Uh, and it's basically killed my Sarcophagos, unfortunately. So um, Pythagoras is here. It's going to die to another Toxic Chip turn. Like I mentioned, that flinch was really big uh, because I would have lived another turn. And now he can just go out to Aegislash Slash and click Protect, i.e. King's Shield. Um, otherwise, I would have been able to just potentially Z-move this turn as I'm going to Z-move anyways. Uh, get some huge damage off on this Aegislash, Slash, and then Shadow Ball would have picked me up another KO on the following turn, which would have been absolutely massive for me. Uh, but unfortunately, only able to get about... Amon in total between like the half health I got off on Pilot Swine and the half health I got off on Iga Slash. Uh, damage on Iga Slash is still good for my Diancy, but um, that flinch really came in pretty clutch for him there. Uh, being able to KO my Cathagrius without losing two Mons, and the fact that Trick Room is still up here, uh, which means my Rotom Heat's got to come out and opt to defog actually as opposed to knocking out this Iga Slash. So uh, I did have the opportunity to obviously overheat here and KO this Iga Slash, uh, but I prioritized defog actually because I wanted to get rid of these stealth rocks from my Volcanion in the back. Obviously I mentioned the Rotom Heat is really really good versus team and it kind of sucked that I had to sack it off here just to defog. I'm not even going to get an overheat off because Trick Room is still active. Um, but I felt like it was worth it in the long run there just to sack off the Rotom Heat, get rid of those stealth rocks, and then just bring in my Volcanion on a free switch. So uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I've been trying to manufacture this um, this situation with my Volcanion, as I mentioned in my team builder. Get it in on things that I can uh, threaten out and get up a substitute versus. And he really does not have good switch-ins for uh, Volcanion just clicking buttons here. So uh, what I'm going to do is opt to substitute. If he breaks my substitute, it's really no big deal. I can just go for Flamethrower the following turn. But if he does King Shield as he does, uh, that means that I'm going to get a free substitute here. So... He goes for that King Shield. Unfortunately, I don't have Fire Blast, so he is actually out of range of a Flamethrower here. Uh, but at the very least, like he can't switch his Iga Slash out, which means his main defensive check to my Mega Diancy is going to be gone after the next couple turns. So, uh, With my Volcanion here, just going to go right for the Flamethrower and knock out, or do a big chunk of damage, I should say, uh, to this Iga Slash as he goes for Shadow Ball here and breaks my Substitute. Uh, kind of sucks, of course, that I'm going to lose my Substitute here, but... Uh, getting big damage off on the Aegis Slash is great. It's no longer a check to my Mega Diancy, and he can't switch it out because he A, can't risk me going for another substitute, and B, nothing on his team really wants to take two hits from the Volcanion anyway. So, uh, gonna go for Flamethrower here, KO this Aegis Slash, and that puts me in a really good position. Uh, obviously, I still have to be pretty threatened by the Mega Manectric. Having lost my Rotom Heat at this point kind of sucks. My really only response left to the Mega Manectric is the Crocodile. Uh, but Volcanion is able to put in huge work on the other three mods on his team. So uh, Manectra kind of has to come out here. I'm going to switch out. Volcanion's way too valuable for me to risk at this point in the game, and I'm pretty sure he'd just go for Thunderbolt anyways, uh, as he does go for Thunderbolt on my Crocodile switch. And so play my Crocodile a little bit aggressively there, but like, what's the worst thing he's going to do to me? Signal Beam like uh, on the switch? That's pretty risky on his end for one, and for two, I would live it. So uh, here the Manectric obviously has to switch out here, fearing me to be Scarfed into Earthquake, and he wouldn't Volt Switch anyways because I am a Ground type, so uh, I'm going to call that and go and double out into my Weezing, uh, regardless of whether he wanted to go Weezing or Moltres there. 
I felt like um, Volcanion Double was my best play. Uh, I'm going to go for Substitute here. Just scout out if he wants to save his Weezing. I don't lose a whole lot by uh, going for Substitute here, and this is one of his better responses to my Crocodile. Uh, so I'm perfectly happy if he wanted to save it there and give me a free Substitute as he goes like Moltres or something. Uh, but he does just make the smart play there and goes for Sludge Wave to break my sub. So I'm going to go for Steam Eruption here, do some huge damage to this Weezing. It's not very specially defensive, obviously. Uh, and able to basically neutralize that thing as a threat. Do get the burn, but I don't think that matters in the long run here. Because he obviously has to sack it off to my Volcanion anyways. Um, so here I'm just going to go for a Flamethrower, knock out this Weezing. And uh, again, he kind of has to go Manetric here if he wants to safely KO my Volcanion. Uh, Choice Banded uh, Jolly Weavile needs an absolute max roll to KO me with knockoff from this range. And I'm pretty sure he'd be Jolly just to make sure he's outspeeding my Ambipom. So he needs an absolute max roll to KO my Volcanion from this range. So what I'm going to do here is just stay in. This Weavile is a huge threat to my team and I don't really have great knockoff switch-ins anyways if he's not banded. Um, so it does turn out he is banded knockoff. It's close to the max roll but does not get the max roll which means I am going to be able to knock out this Weavile as well. Volcanion picking up three KOs this match. Really, really nice job from Volcanion here, uh, and that was super critical. Obviously now, the two Pokemon that he's got left destroy my Scizor, and my Volcanion's not at a range of HP where it's going to be able to do anything versus team anymore, um, but he's just going to be able to knock me out with the HP Ice there, presumably the HP Ice there. And uh, I can just go Crocodile to Revenge Kill this thing. I could, in theory, go uh, Mega Diancie, but I don't think I actually KO him with Earth Power from full. Uh, and he, obviously I don't want to be taking damage on that thing since it is really my best way of checking the Moltres in the late game. So uh, here I'm just going to go for a knockoff, I believe, predicting the Moltres switch in. In reality, I probably should have just raw Stone Edge there. Like, if I was going to make the knockoff play anyways on the uh, Manectric, I feel like I should have just clicked Stone Edge and knocked out the Moltres. Uh, I don't really know why I clicked knockoff there. I think I just wanted to get some good damage off on the Manectric if he happened to want to stay in, but... Uh, really a foolish play on my end, allowing that Moltres to stay alive and get behind a substitute as he's going to be able to freely uh, Z-move my Diancie. Obviously, I stay in regular form here so I don't die. Um, and he, if he happened to have HP Steel or something, I believe I would have lived that as well, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in regular form. So just going to go for the Diamond Storm here, break his substitute, and uh, I can now Mega Evolve on the following turn and just go for another one. If he gives me damage on Manectric, I win with Crunch for my Crocodile. And if he gives me Moltres, I win uh, with just my Crocodile clicking Earthquake. So um, there's no lose uh, scenario unless I miss the Diamond Storm here. So uh, I'm going to go for Diamond Storm, do some big damage to this Manectric, obviously not KO it, uh, but I've got really no reason to save my Scizor at this point. It does nothing versus team, and Diancie can still potentially do something versus the Moltres. Uh, so definitely going to stack off the Scizor here. It's my least useful member. It takes a ton from that Thunderbolt and obviously is not going to take a Flamethrower on the following turn. Uh, I opt to go for Knockoff here as opposed to going for Bullet Punch, just because Bullet Punch wasn't going to knock him out anyways. Uh, and I felt like Knockoff was the better play in case he wanted to choke or something uh, and go Moltres. So uh, able to get knocked out there, but I'm just going to go out to my Crocodile in here and click Crunch. Uh, he's got no win con at this point in the game. If, I, if he goes into Moltres, it dies to Crunch. If he stays in with Manectric, it dies to Crunch. Even if he went into Moltres and got the Flame Body on me and then came out and intimidated me with his Manectric, I could just sack off my Diancie and go for Earthquake uh, with my Crocodile the following turn so uh, we were able to kind of finesse the end game here and uh, pick up a W as Crocodile is going to pick up the last two KOs here uh, but very good game to Matt I think he definitely had me on the back foot early game with his pilot swine kind of toxicing and stealth rocking in front of my Rotom Heat uh, was kind of something I didn't really anticipate super well because overheat obviously dropped my special attack stat um, but otherwise, I thought I played this game reasonably well. Obviously, clicking knockoff instead of Stone Edge with the, with the Crocodile wasn't the smartest move I've ever made. Uh, but it didn't end up costing me in the end, which is fine. And we do finish the season off at 7-1, and one, so not too shabby. Uh, we actually lost our first game of the season, if you guys will remember, to Cena, And then uh, went on a nice 7-game win streak here to finish it off. And finish with the number 2 overall seed in OLT Harmony. So... Uh, that means we do get a bye directly to the semifinals, where we will be playing Miso Soup, uh, who, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, was 8-0 in the regular season. Definitely looking to pick up a big win there. That would be super huge for us. I believe you're guaranteed promotion if you make it to the finals match in this, um, in this format, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that would be super, super great for me. Definitely want to get uh, promoted to Oblivion for next season if I can. Uh, and I hope you guys tune in for the battle versus Miso. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Later.